Hello everyone, Gilly here. Recently I coded up a solution to the book return problem in the pretty cool collection of problems called Game of Codes. Um, recently also I've been doing a lot of event store, which is a pretty cool database for storing events. And I was thinking about this problem in terms of event store, and I think the solution could be kind of cool, or it could be a problem that's well fitted for event store. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna kinda warp this input data if you remember, if you've seen this problem before, or even if you haven't, basically the idea is we wanna track when you're stepping below the zeroth floor in a staircase. So you're starting at floor zero, and a negative means, goes, means go down a step. So in this case, having a negative at the very beginning means go to negative one, or go below zero. Um, whenever we go below, what we wanna do is we wanna output the index, one-based, where we ended up stepping below. If we keep going negative, so if we're already at negative one, we go to negative two, we don't want to track that. We only care when we cross over into the negative steps. So if we kind of morph this a little bit and imagine that we're looking at, after, looking at it after the fact, where instead of this being instructions that we operate over, they're events of things that already occurred. So we're modifying the problem a little bit and saying, imagine if these things already occurred and we stored the events in event store. Um, it might be fun to write a query using their query uh, framework, which is built into projections, um, to get an answer about this, to solve this problem for us, basically. I think it's really well suited, especially considering when I solved it in F Sharp, I used a scan, but a scan's kind of like a special case of a fold. This problem's like a fold, and you always hear Greg Young say that event processing is like a fold over history, over your past behaviors and events. So what I've done is I've gone into my local version of event store, which I have running locally. Wow, that was a little redundant. <laughs> and I've inserted events which represent each of these. So I have a stream here, book return example. And in the stream, I have events representing basically the minus and positive. So you could imagine these things already happened and we want answers on them. Basically, step down was the first thing, event number zero. And then we go up to event number seven, which is also a step down, but these represent our negatives and our positive. We have negative, positive, negative, positive, positive, negative, 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 positive, negative, positive, positive, negative, negative, negative. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to build a query in event store that will get us the answer to our problem. So I can hit this new query button, which is coming in a later version of event of event stores UI, and I can write a query against this. So from the stream, which means just target this one particular stream that I've made, when we get to different cases, let's handle them differently. So first, let's talk about our init case. Init is just gonna be the data that we start with. So if you look back at the problem, it says that we start on floor zero or the basement. So current, is zero, or the current stair we're at is zero. And then let's just add an array which will store our results for us. The results will be the actual answers, or if we do it right, one, three, and seven. All right, so now we add cases for the events that we wanna handle. And if we go back to the stream, <clears throat> we have stepped down and stepped up. Okay, so let's add cases for those. Basically, if you've studied these before, they take the former state and they take an event, which is a lot like the scan we saw in the F-sharp video. Step up, state and event as well. And this is basically like pattern matching. It's like saying, if you get an event that looks like this, here's how you handle it. This code right here, where here's your past state and here's your event. Go ahead and change state however you like to get your new state. So let's handle stepped up first. Stepped up's an easier case. We don't care about when we've gone that direction. We really just have to remember that we've done that. So basically what we wanna do is we wanna increment current. Current was zero for the first step, but if we just went up one, we'd want it to be one. Pretty straightforward. Step down is where the actual logic is gonna to have to come into play. So if we're on location zero and we're stepping down, that means we've stepped into the negative realm. So if s.current 
is zero. I don't even need to say and we're stepping down because this is the event. The event is that we step down. We're already in the context of that event. If it's zero, then what we need to do is we need to save this as a result. And for now, I'm just going to do s.results.push e. So I'm going to save the whole event just so that we can see if it has any properties on it that might help just get us the answer. Um, and of course, if we step down, like in stepped up, and step up, stepped up, no, I was right the first time, wow. Like in stepped up, we want to remember that the change changed our current value. So s.current should be decremented by one. So why don't we run this really quick? Okay, it ran. So it's gonna give us the final or current state for the final after it's processed everything. And then it's giving us the events bodies or all of the enveloping data about the enveloping data, sound more fancy, about the event. So just kind of eyeballing it, it looks like there's the sequence number, which is a string. And it looks like it's almost what we want. However, it's off by one. So they're indexing at one, or they're indexing at zero, but the problem is indexing at one. They're saying, for example, the first one's bad, one. So to do that, we need to make the strings in a number. So we can do parse int, which is just a built-in JavaScript thing, dot sequence number. I'm just gonna copy it. And we really want to increment that by one to get us into one-based numbering. And I actually think that's it. Let's run it again. And there you go. We have our results. They're exactly like what the problem said. Awesome. Thank you for watching. I hope this was useful for you.